There are two main ways, the way I look at it, to create story maps. First, publish an ArcGIS online map to a web application. Right? These are the, the web applications here. Visualize with me, and we'll show it in a moment. Uh, the gallery of, oh, 6 times 3, about 18 uh, little thumbnail maps. Swipe maps. Charlie wrote a, a blog about that recently. And there's a bunch of other ones in there. There's a profile where you can make a 3D pro elevation profile. There's a bunch of them in there. They, we don't give you too many because it's designed to be you know, sort of the most popular, the most useful. There's other ones that are not in that particular gallery that we can talk about sometime. But what you're doing there is you're creating an ArcGIS online map, and you're just publishing it to one of the Story Maps web applications. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. I also, though, want to mention, and I'll demonstrate this uh, toward the very end of our webinar here in about three hours' time. Ha, ha, ha. Just kidding. Just kidding. No, in about 10 minutes. Uh, downloading and customizing Story Maps templates for your own use. Hmm. You upload them and related files to your own server. So that is another way of creating story maps. It's a bit more complicated, um, but not too complicated. But it's more powerful, as you might expect. Number one, easier to do, less power. Number two, a little bit more complicated, but a little bit more power. Now, for both methods, I think it's important to note that story maps are based on ArcGIS online maps. So that it means that you build your map inside ArcGIS Online first. And whether you're using method one or method two, it doesn't matter. It's still based on ArcGIS Online maps. Now, the good news about that is that you're going to have two things when you're done. You're going to have a story map web application. And you're going to have an ArcGIS Online map. You don't have to change your ArcGIS. Um, uh, well, you don't have to change both of them. You don't have to change your uh, story map, unless you want to add photos and stuff. But you don't have to change the basic thing. If you go back and change your ArcGIS Online map, your story map will automatically update. Ooh, OK. More about that in a minute. Now, three points before we get rolling with the hands-on. Well, this is all hands-on, right? But the demo. First of all, story maps are uh, available for use are rapidly expanding. Yeah, there's some story maps out there that uh, may not be suitable for education. It's rare that I come across one. Um, really, you folks, being the creative educators that you are, I'm sure can find lots of uses for these various story maps. Uh, local to global scale, uh, present day events. There was one that came out yesterday on the Philippines typhoon uh, with photos and uh, the path and the towns and so on. And uh, you know historical events, um, core content, lots of things. Second, the tools to create these, as you might expect, are rapidly evolving. So please do not get too wound up into step one, I do this. Step two, I do this. Now, yes, you, you need to get a hold of the, the basic idea. But don't get too locked into, oh, shoot, where's that tab now? Right? We all have to sort of practice what Charlie's always advocating, and that is keeping your knees bent on this. Not, this, this more than ever, more than anything, really. These story maps platforms are, are rapidly evolving. And the good news is that they're becoming more varied um, and easier to use. But they are rapidly changing. Uh, when I started making videos on story maps about oh, last January, three months later I realized oh, I need to update some of these because some of the tools are now much easier to use. And uh, so that's the kind of environment we're in. Good planning, though, makes for good story map. We could have a whole webinar on planning a story and then figuring out, right? It's just like uh, any good, compelling thing that you're creating, right? You don't just dive right in. It's you know, field work, uh, for that matter, right? You don't just wander out in the field <laughs> and collect data, right? You have a plan. Same thing here with creating any map or any good story map. So let's do method one first, and then in the last few minutes of the webinar, we'll talk about uh, method two. But method one, story maps as web applications. So we're going to upload and organize your multimedia, photos and videos. So in my particular case, I have some photographs out on the CASA web, okay, or Google Plus now, right? So here's my uh, um, gallery of uh, some of the things that I've got uh, publicly shared anyway up on uh, the CASA web slash Google Plus. And in there, I created a folder. Uh, and my folder is called West Rail Line Denver. 
And here's me on the West Rail Line. It's a big deal. We've got a, a, a new light rail that runs out on the west side of Denver, Colorado. Very cool. So uh, I took some photographs on my very first trip on the, on the West Rail Line and wanted to make a story map uh, about the West Rail Line. The point, though, is not really about West Rail Line. The point is, is that I've got them all in a folder. And I've got that folder publicly shared. And that folder, uh, each photograph, right, is not embedded in some other place. It, it actually can be able to pull it up. If I open this image in a new tab, this is just like creating um, map notes, right, in ArcGIS Online. We've all been there. You've got to have the ability, like I'm doing here, to pull up that photograph as a standalone web page. If it's embedded in a Facebook uh, frame or an animation of some sort, it's not going to work. And so that's an important note. They're in a folder, they're publicly accessible, and they're all standalone images. Got it? All right, so now uh, that you know that I've got this gallery of stuff inside Google Plus Picasa Web, now I'm going to go out to my content. Okay, so now I'm inside an organization inside ArcGIS Online. And I started, as I indicated, earlier with a web map. I'm going to open the West Rail Line web map. Now, the interesting thing, I think, is that in this case, I have a map with some trails on it. See these? In this case, the trails include a light rail. Let me show you where I got this. I created a map for the NCGE conference uh, this summer. and. It is a map about the geography of Colorado. Ah, imagine that. One of my favorite places. And in this, I actually created a phase two kind of story map, which is right here. And we'll talk more about this in a, in a minute. So this is another story map, but this is a step two kind of story map. In other words, this is a, uh, a, a story map that takes a little more time to create, but it's a little more powerful. But one of the things I wanted to draw your attention to is that I've got trails that I've actually digitized. I digitized them in ArcGIS Desktop, and I uploaded those to the ArcGIS Online environment. And one of the things I've got on here is a, is a series of trails. And since I knew that I had already digitized the light rail line running from Denver out west to Lakewood, I, I started with that inside my ArcGIS Online map. Right? So that's where this line came from. I didn't have to start over. And that's kind of cool that you can actually start with things that you've, that you've uh, you know, created in the past. So you can see I've got other trails on here right now, too. But what we're really interested in is creating a story map from it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this as something, OK? And I'm going to keep it as West Rail Line Base Map, and I'm going to call it for webinar. And I can delete this later, right? This is just my tag that I've actually um, created for this demonstration for this webinar. Oh, there, there it is. Great. Now, I'm going to share it. Okay, I'm going to share it with everyone. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make a web application, right? And you've seen this before. Make a web application at the bottom. And this is where I was talking about where you've got an elevations profile, you've got the swipe tool, you've got a variety of things. But number two here, on this number two page, and again, this you know, keep your knees bent. It might float around to a different page. but Right now, the map tour is what I want. I want to publish that story map to a map tour. And I'm going to call it West Rail Line uh, Story Map and then Webinar. OK? Very nice. Save and publish. Super. All right. So no bells and whistles come on, right? When you publish one of these web applications, where does it end up going? Well, it ends up going into your content, right? So if I'm going to go over to home on the left side and go to my content. And now I should have, see, I've got two things. I've got a web map, which I have shared with everyone. And I've got a webinar story map. It's a web mapping application. And I'm going to go ahead and share that with everyone. OK, super. So now that's shared with everyone, too. Now, the fun part starts. 